Hi guys, it's Glenn. I'm gonna make some holiday cider. Mmm, yum. Some warm, steamy holiday cider coming right up. So how do we get there? Well, we start with ingredients. And you could, I mean, if you're late for the party, you can grab all kinds of ciders, like uh, pearl cinnamon cider, pear cinnamon cider, or spiced cranberry cider. These are all pretty yummy. Um, but we're gonna start with apple juice. Uh, you could juice your own apples or you could just buy it in a jar. But if you buy your own apple, if you don't squ squeeze them yourself, if you don't start with apples, uh, you got to be sure not to get apple juice from concentrate. Uh, of the dozen I ran out and tried, all apple juice from concentrate tastes awful. Or not really awful like it's undrinkable, but just awful like it's nothing, like it's cardboard, like it's flat, like it's blech. So you gotta get not from concentrate. The two that I found that I like the best are this Trader Joe's Macintosh apple juice. This is really yummy. And the number one that I've found so far is the Martinelli's. This stuff is really great. It is more expensive, but you know, it's not really gonna make a dent in your holiday budget. So, you know, spend a couple bucks and get um, a really nice juice. Uh, another thing I like about making it myself is these, I don't know if you can really see it here, but these are cloudy, these, um, these ciders. Uh, and we're gonna make uh, a cider that's completely non-cloudy. So here's, here's the finished product that we're heading for. And if you can see, it's, it's just this really clear amber uh, you know, as a, okay, I'm being a little silly, but, but really, especially if you get one of these fantastic, you know, double wall borosilicate glass glasses, um, which maintain the temperature forever, uh, you can really show off the clarity of the stuff. So great, great. Okay. So some apple juice, the best you can find, use a little bit of rum. Um, Captain Morgan's is kind of the de facto standard for rum, not the, not the light, but the spiced. So a spiced or a dark rum, even better than the Captain Morgan spice. I'm gonna go with this Whaler's dark, dark rum. The Whaler's, um, well, you can't really see, it's just really dark. But the really dark means that there's a lot going on. It's gonna add a lot more complexity to our mix. A um, Little bit of maple syrup, always. And um, I'm a big fan of this half Splenda, half brown sugar with a little bit of glycerin. I like the Splenda part because it, you know, obviously cuts down the calories. I like the brown sugar part because it adds up the flavor. And I love the glycerin because unlike those boxes of brown sugar, which you use once and they turn into bricks, this stuff stays soft forever. And here's a few cranberries that I'm going to throw in the pot when we're simmering. Okay, so over here is actually the entire thing ready to go. I'm gonna make a gallon or a gallon and a pint, and it's gonna be half apple juice. So this is my um, two quarts, one, two, my two quarts of Martinelli's or whatever great apple juice you find. Here's one quart of ruby lemon mint. I'll explain that in a sec. And then here's a pint or 500 mLs of cinnamon, cloves. I got, so I'm just gonna use, I'm really not an alcohol person. <laughs> so I'm just gonna use one cup of rum or 250 mLs, just one cup of rum, just to add you know, a few of those notes that especially that dark Whalers adds. You might want to add two or three or four or however many cups of rum, but I'm just gonna do the one. I'm gonna do one cup of maple syrup, and then do a half a cup, you know, like um, just a very little bit of brown sugar. You have to see for yourself. You know, For me, this whole mix, um, I'd love to have it be no sugar added, but the half a cup of brown really makes a difference. Um, know your audience and, and you know, just work it to taste. Uh, 40 year olds tend to like fairly unsweetened stuff. 20 year olds tend to like fairly sweetened stuff. That's not always true, but if you don't know better, that's a decent rule. Um, but even for, the, even for the 40 year olds, I think to bring out the, to take just a little bit of the harshness down and bring out some of the notes here, a half a cup is great. If I was making it for my students, well, I'd probably leave the rum out and I'd use at least a whole cup of sugar. Okay, so this ruby lemon mint, what's that? It's kind of my standard uh, go-to blend here. So it's uh, hibiscus, lemongrass, peppermint, or if you're a wimp, spearmint. Um, and when I'm making a quart, for me a quart is six teaspoons. So if I'm using black tea, that would be six level teaspoons, or if it's any kind of herbal tea, then six heaping teaspoons. 
Uh, so for ruby lemon mint, then it's just going to be two, 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 two hibiscus, two peppermint, two lemongrass. Uh, a couple other things here in the closet. I got to tell you, the rum is not the most intoxicating ingredient we're using. The cinnamon chips, oh my. Oh yeah, cinnamon. So these little sticks that you get, like you pay a couple bucks for a jar that's got like three or four sticks in it. Um, they're actually pretty flavorful. They're just it's a really expensive way to go. So I'm going to use these sticks just to throw in the simmering pot. But for actually sort of brewing the stuff, I'm going to go with these cinnamon chips from uh, San Francisco Herb. A great place. Mail order from them. Fantastic. And uh, uh, really yummy ingredients. Really nice prices. And um, <laughs> okay, so you have to let me have a moment with the cinnamon. Wow. Okay, so the cinnamon is kind of the sweet-like moment, and then over here the cloves, oh, oh, they're kind of like your savory moment, the cloves. Wow. <laughs> you know, I really kind of go nuts with my peppermint with those summer iced tea ingredients, but the winter, you know, hot cider ingredients, incredible. <laughs> I'm also gonna use um, some star anise. Uh, I'm actually just going to throw it, and I used up the last at the party on Saturday, but I'm just going to throw it again in the simmering pot. Um, star anise, anise, and licorice are three completely different plants, but they all have that same fantastic licorice taste. I'm actually not using any licorice scented anything um, in this particular brew, but I would certainly be up for doing so. You know, it's, uh, I don't know, this, this, recipe just kind of evolved, but, but liquor should be great. So anyway, here we go. So I'm going to take my two quarts of Martinelli's or whatever other apple juice you like, but not from concentrate. Avoid. Okay, so there's a quart. There's a half gallon of apple juice, so that's half of our blend. And now I got this ruby lemon mint. Let me get a little strainer. Cinnamon. Oh, brewing times, yeah. Um, black tea, two hours is plenty. Herbal tea, two to four is nice. For the cinnamon and the cloves, I would go longer, like I do four for them. And also I broke my six teaspoons rule for the cinnamon and the cloves. Um, I really want the cinnamon and the cloves to kind of develop a flavor, but I don't want to use a ton of water. I don't want to dilute the apple juice too much. So for the cinnamon and the cloves, I put six, um, six teaspoons, not in a whole quart, not in a whole liter, but in just a half a quarter, 500 mLs. So, okay, so here comes the cinnamon. Cloves. I love, I don't know if you can see it, but the way they all like stand up as they're floating there, it's pretty great. Fantastic. Okay, so my one cup, or however much you want to use, again, you might want a lot more, but my one cup of rum, my one cup of maple syrup, It's been in the window for a while. It doesn't normally pour that fast. Wow. So it got a little bit of sun and it pours much faster. And then my not my modest but very important half a cup of brown sugar. Eh, boom. Okay. <laughs> and stir it up. So give that a nice good stir. And then, so I haven't really worked out a great heating strategy. It seems like the crock pot is the de facto standard on heating this stuff, but crock pots take forever to get hot and then they get like crazy hot. So I have to work out the heating part. But anyway, you know, put it on the stove, do whatever, 
and throw, so I'll throw like some cranberries, some star anise, and some licorice sticks in here, and then boom, serve it up. Oh yeah. It's not actually quite as good as sniffing the, the ingredients by themselves, but. It's pretty incredible. Okay, so enjoy. Have a great time. Holiday cider. Lots of ingredients. Yay.